NATO state ready to send its troops to Ukraine. Lithuania is prepared to deploy its soldiers on Ukrainian soil for a training mission, Financial Times reported, citing Prime Minister Ingrida Simonite. French President Emmanuel Macron floated the idea of having NATO boots on the ground in Ukraine in February, arguing that nothing should be excluded to prevent a Russian victory in the conflict. The Lithuanian government has similarly stated that there should be no red lines in efforts to aid Kiev. Speaking to the British newspaper, Simonite said she has parliamentary permission to deploy soldiers in Ukraine, but has not received a request from Kiev. Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis Shmihal told Canadian media last week that his nation would be glad to see Western intervention if the time comes. Lithuania is among the Western nations that regularly resort to rhetoric Russia regards as belligerent. Last month, one of its ambassadors published a post on social media which implied that the strategic Crimean bridge would soon be destroyed, one of Kiev's key goals. The comment followed US approval of $61 billion in Ukraine-related spending and the revelation that it had supplied more mid-range ATACMS missiles to the country. This week, the Russian military announced a surprise drill to test its ability to deploy non-strategic nuclear weapons. Moscow said it was a response to threats from Western officials, including Macron and British Foreign Secretary David Cameron, who told the media last week that Ukraine has the right to use arms donated by the UK to strike targets deep inside Russia. In her interview, Simonite said she was not concerned about Moscow's reaction to the possible Lithuanian deployment. Every second week you hear that somebody will be nuked. She remarked, the Prime Minister reiterated that Vilnius was keen to help Ukraine to ensure that it has the potential to renew its armed forces. She denied that her government was considering deportations of Ukrainian citizens since forcing them to go home to fight Russia would not be legal. US has to be ready to send troops to Ukraine, House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries. U.S. House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries said the United States must continue supporting Ukraine to prevent a broader war. We can't let Ukraine fall because if it does, then there's a significant likelihood that America will have to get into the conflict, not simply with our money, but with our service women and our service men. Jeffries said in an interview with CBS, Jeffries explained that he believes Russian President Vladimir Putin seeks to recreate the Soviet Union and in doing so will threaten NATO allies. Putin's invasion of neighboring Georgia did not stop there. Jeffries pointed out, nor did his takeover of Crimea in eastern Ukraine. Are we to believe that in the face of this kind of consistent aggression, if we allow Vladimir Putin to succeed in Ukraine, he's only going to stop in Ukraine? Of course not, Jeffrey said. There is a growing pro-Putin faction in the Republican Party that does not want to support Ukraine and believes, for some reason, that Russia is not an enemy of the United States of America, Jeffries said. In his interview, Jeffries spoke about Ukrainian military's ability to hold off Russian forces for more than two years. This has been a strategic success by any definition, Jeffrey said. And so those that want to convince the American people that the Ukrainian effort has been a failure are promoting Vladimir Putin's propaganda because the facts say the exact opposite, which is why it's important for us to finish the job. It's a Churchill or Chamberlain moment. Last month, Congress approved a long-awaited bill to provide $61 billion in military and humanitarian aid for Ukraine. The first major aid package since December 2022, it came after months of fighting and deadlock in Congress, driven by Republicans who are divided over foreign aid to Ukraine. Poland has a secret weapon to turn Donald Trump against Russia. Poland is hoping its out-of-power populists can help turn Donald Trump against Russia and persuade him to further support Ukraine, Politico reported. Trump has long pushed for NATO countries to increase their defense spending and unsettled international allies in February when he said he would allow Russia to do whatever the hell they want to member countries failing to meet defense spending criteria. Polish President Andrzej Duda met with the former president in New York City on April the 17th, where the two discussed the war between Russia and Ukraine, the conflict with Israel in the Middle East, and many other topics having to do with getting to world peace. A statement by the Trump campaign read, A day after the meeting, Trump, who has repeatedly praised Russian President Vladimir Putin and often criticized aid to Ukraine, wrote on social media, As everyone agrees, Ukrainian survival and strength should be much more important to Europe than to us. But it is also important to us. Get moving, Europe! 
Duda also met with Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson, with some crediting the meeting with helping the long-delayed vote on U.S. military aid for Ukraine. Duda is our Republican whisperer. Michael Baranowski, who leads the German Marshals Fund's Poland office, told Politico. Conservative politicians close to the formerly ruling Law and Justice Party and Duda played up the apparent role he had played in persuading Trump and Johnson to take a more pro-Ukrainian stance. A big round of applause for President Andrzej Duda who has gained powerful resources to fight Russian imperialism, said Darius Mateki, a lawmaker of the Sovereign Poland Party allied with Law and Justice Party. But others were less inclined to believe that Polish officials had such sway over U.S. politics. EU lawmaker Andrzej Halicki told Politico the idea was nonsense. Ahead of U.S. presidential elections later this year and a possible Trump victory, his stance on Russia and Ukraine is cause for concern in European capitals, particularly Kyiv. Trump has repeatedly said he could end Russia's war within 24 hours if elected president, without specifying the steps for reaching a peace deal between Kyiv and Moscow. The former president made it very clear that he believed Ukraine must be part of Russia. His former advisor, Fiona Hill, said, according to The Guardian, citing an excerpt from a book by the New York Times reporter David Sanger.